This video was sponsored by Bloomscape. Ah, there we go. I really need to make a table for out here. All right. White snow, red sky, reach up for so, so high, blue eyes. This story starts out like, well, so many before it. I needed something, I didn't have it, so I decided to build it myself. I started out by going to, yes, Home Depot, and buying just a bunch of their stock cedar. Some 2x4s, some 4x4s, and some stock cedar 2x6 decking. And, well, I just started working. I decided to first take the 2x4s and run them through the planer. I wasn't really removing a lot of material here, more just smoothing them down. They were a little rough, so I just took a nice little hair off of them on each pass just to make them a little smoother. Then I took them over to my miter saw and I roughly cut them to length. I'll be using these 2x4s to make up my apron or lower table structure that I will attach my legs to. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Because we live in Oregon and it rains, well, all the time, I wanted to design this table in a way that it could fold up for easy storage. That way I could just throw it in the garage during those cold rainy months and pull it back out when the sun shines. You know, that one, one glorious day a year. So after cutting my apron pieces roughly to length, I took them over to my work surface and I had to start figuring out how I was going to attach my legs. Now because I want these legs to fold up underneath the table, I decided to attach each leg to the apron using a giant metal pointy thing. What are those called? They're called these things. Lag bolts? Hanger bolts? But really, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, am I right? And yes, I did just quote Shakespeare in a woodworking video. I'm just that kind of guy. So after determining where my pivot point would be for my legs, I took my side apron pieces over to the drill press and I drilled a half inch hole so that those bolts would slide nicely through the outside of my apron. I did the same on both ends of the apron piece and, well, I did the exact same thing on the other apron piece. Four holes in total for all four of my legs. 
Then I decided to get a little fancy and add a rounded profile to the end of each one of these apron pieces. So I took this total boat measuring cup and I used it to trace a nice little circle. Yes, total boat. This is the closest I will ever come to making a river table. So after tracing my rounded profile onto the end of each apron piece, I went over to the bandsaw and I just cut it out using my good old fashioned eyeball. I had to come in from behind on this cut, which was a little awkward because the pieces were so long, but I got it done in the end and it actually came out pretty nice. I'll touch this up with a sander a little later and make it nice and smooth. Next, I had to figure out how I was going to hook my two apron pieces together. My idea was to use three brace pieces, one on each end and one in the middle. But here's the issue. My leg is going to attach to the inside of the apron and pivot. And I wanted to create some sort of stop that it could butt up against and, well, keep it at a certain distance out so my table wouldn't just collapse on itself. See, I'll show you from this side because it might make more sense. The leg will fold up underneath and then fold out and stop. So my brace piece here, if it's just straight, it's only gonna stop on that bottom portion, which I didn't like. So I wanted to attach my brace piece at an angle so that it would sit perfectly flush up against that brace. So I determined that that brace piece needed to sit at a 25 degree angle. So I took this scrap piece of cedar over to my chop saw, I cut it at 25 degrees, and I used it as a template to mark out exactly where I wanted it to land. But there was just one more issue. As you can see with that 2x4 brace at an angle, it sticks up above my apron, which is not good because that will interfere with my tabletop. So I traced out the portion that was sticking up, and I went over to my table saw. I set my table saw at 25 degrees to match the 25 degree angle on my apron, and I just trimmed it down. Now, I will note that this is just a scrap piece at this point. I'm just trying to get my measurements all correct before I actually cut my real brace pieces. Then taking that scrap piece back over to my apron, I checked on my line and it was perfect at this point. Now all I had to do was figure out exactly how I was going to attach my brace pieces to my apron. Now, if this was an interior furniture piece, I would do some sort of concealed joinery. Maybe I would use true mortise and tenons or dowels or dominoes. But because this is an exterior furniture piece, I really wanted to avoid gluing anything up altogether. So I decided butt joints and screws was the way to go. So after very carefully tracing out where each one of my brace pieces would land, I marked where all of my screws would be inserted. Then I took all of my apron pieces over to the drill press and I decided to countersink my screws in just a half inch. So just again using my fancy dancy eyeball, I drilled in a half inch. When using a Forstner bit, a half inch is just as deep as the head of the bit itself. So it's really easy to eyeball a perfect half inch. Now call me crazy or call me lazy, but I'm gonna leave all the screws exposed on this piece because, well, it's for my back porch. But you could easily plug each one of these holes with a cedar plug glued in place with epoxy if you were so inclined. But I'll leave that up to you and your own creativity or anal tendencies. Whatever floats your boat, man. You do you. So after pre-drilling for all my screws, I went over to my miter saw once again and I cut down three brace pieces all the exact same length. Now two of those brace pieces will be my outside brace pieces, so I take them over to the table saw and I cut that oh so familiar 25 degree angle on the top of each one, leaving the middle brace exactly as it was coming off the miter saw. That one will go in the middle, perpendicular to the outside pieces, 
and my two pieces cut at an angle will go on either end. Something like this. Then before screwing everything together, I decided to clamp it firmly in place. You know, that way it won't move around while I'm trying to screw it in. This just seemed like the logical next step. I don't even really know why I'm showing you. I did take the time to make sure everything was nice and square and perfectly lined up exactly where it needed to be. Once everything was clamped down, looking very fly or just like a bunch of cedar two by fours clamped together i pre-drilled every hole because we're sending screws directly into the end grain of these cedar two by fours it is very important that you pre-drill everything the last thing you want to happen at this point is a nice big split in that cedar two by four I should also note that for all of my fasteners, I am using stainless steel deck screws. Stainless steel is very important when working with cedar. Other screws will cause nasty black leaching to come out of your screw holes, and it'll change the color of your piece, which you don't want. But with that, my frame or apron is done. And yes, Jason, it's very light. You can spin it around your head. We're very impressed. So with our apron all put together, we could start figuring out the folding legs. So I just grabbed one of the 4x4s that would become my legs, and I loosely put it in place. But as you can see, it's kind of long. I think 8 feet is a little much for this table. So I went over to the miter saw and I cut it roughly to length, purposely leaving it a few inches long so that we could cut it down to the exact right size once we get everything figured out. So after cutting four legs, because it's a table, and most tables I know of have four legs, I needed to start figuring out exactly how this was gonna pivot. Now if you watch my facial expression very closely here, you'll see a look of utter defeat and bewilderment. Check it out. This is where I realize I made a terrible, terrible mistake. I drilled the hole for my pivot point in the completely wrong place. As you can see, my hole is here, and if my leg pivots on that hole, when it pivots over, there is going to be about an inch gap between my leg and that stop. It actually needs to move over so that as it pivots, it is perfectly flush against that stop brace piece. So what to do? My hole is here, it needs to be here obviously too close to re-drill, so the only thing to do was to, well, pull everything apart and remake those outer apron pieces. What a moron. This probably happened, well, because I'm making this up as I go along. But fortunate for you, I have plans available for this table, and I will have already figured out all the horrible mistakes so that you can do it perfectly on your very first try. Before completely remaking the apron piece, however, I decided to drill the hole in the correct place, slap a leg on there, and just make sure that this whole idea and concept would even work. And then if it works, I can remake the outer pieces and go from there. So I quickly mark out a leg, I trace out a round profile on the top so that it will rotate correctly, I cut out the round profile over on the bandsaw, and I clean it up on my oscillating benchtop belt sander. Then I take the leg over to the drill press, and I drill a half inch hole right through the center of the leg. Then I took the leg over to my messed up table apron, and I inserted my bolt through the apron and through the leg. And then I slapped on a washer and a nut. And what do you know? With the pivot point in the correct place, it works exactly how it should. Now obviously the leg was a little long, so after trimming it to the correct size, it folds down up underneath the table apron, and I think it will work. So knowing my plan of action was somewhat going to be successful, I ripped apart the apron that I just spent the last hour, hour and a half putting together. And I just 
tossed it aside. I decided to take a short break from the patio table and clean up the back porch a little bit with the sponsor of this video, Bloomscape. I have never been much of a green thumb, so Bloomscape is awesome because they make buying plants easy by delivering healthy plants to your door and setting you up with tips and tricks you need to help your plants thrive. Plants are cared for by plant experts and kept in optimal conditions at their greenhouses where they're then shipped directly to you. If you get on their website, they have a wide variety of plants, both indoor and outdoor, and they even have these convenient bloom kits that include a variety of young plants, tools, and supplies, along with care and instructions to keep them alive and thriving. My plants showed up in the mail, I unboxed them, I put them in the soil, arranged them expertly, if I might add. Well, actually, I arranged them the way that I was told to in the convenient Bloomscape instructions. So yeah, I arranged them expertly. Bloomscape had everything I needed to transform my back porch. I even got these pots and potting soil on their website. The plants came looking fresh and vibrant, and installing them, as I like to say, was a breeze. Go to bloomscape.com or click the link in the description and use my code BOURBONMOTH for 20% off your first plant order of $100 or more. Now, let's go finish this table. I remade two new apron pieces. The nice thing was that I was able to salvage all my internal braces. So with my new apron pieces made and that pivot point drilled in the correct location, I reassembled my apron pieces and I started once again working on my legs. Now I just decided to go ahead and make four brand new legs. I rushed that other one and I wasn't too happy with it. So when in doubt, just start over from scratch. So I took all my legs over to the drill press, I drilled out for my bolt, I traced out that rounded profile on the top, and I cut it out on the bandsaw, then cleaned it up on my oscillating bench top sander. Just like this. Then with all my legs cut and sanded, I took one over and I plopped it in place. It moved exactly how I wanted it, so now I needed to determine how long to make it. This is fairly easy. I just measured directly off of my work table up 28 and a half inches. The overall table height will be 30 inches, but you have to account for the inch and a half cedar top. So after measuring two points at 28 and a half inches, I drew a straight line between those two points and I disassembled the leg and took it over to my miter saw and cut it on that angle. See, I'm doing what I just said I was doing. And boom, a perfectly cut leg, hopefully at the exact right angle. As you can see, it folds up perfect, fitting right in between our outer brace piece and our middle brace piece. So with one leg cut to the correct size, I lined it up with my other legs, I traced it out, and I cut the angle on all three remaining legs. Now with all of my legs cut to the right size and the correct angle cut on the bottom, I took them over to my apron and I started plopping them in place. Just hooking them in with those bolts. A little pounding here, a little sliding there, and before long, I had all four legs hooked on and they were rotating very nicely. Is rotating the way to say that? Rotating, folding, flopping? Anyways, they were working the way I thought they would work. So that deserved a little dance move, I guess. Anyways. There was just one thing I didn't like in this design. The bolt just seemed a little flimsy. There was way too much movement in the leg itself. So I had to figure out another way to hook these on other than a bo hey, I got an idea. Instead of a bolt just going through each individual leg, I decided to switch out the bolt for some half inch threaded rod. That way the threaded rod would go all the way through one leg, through the other leg, 
and give much more rigidity to the legs themselves. So I removed my bolts, I slid in the half inch threaded rod, and we were in business. As you can see with that threaded rod now going all the way across, the legs had much less movement back and forth, which I thought would work better. Next, I took one of these locking nuts. A locking nut has a nice little rubber ring inside the top. So once you screw it on, it's a lot harder to back back off your threaded rod, which I thought would work good in this application. After hooking one on one side, I marked out where it should be on the other side. I took out my threaded rod, took it over to my metal chop saw, and I chopped down the threaded rod to the correct length. Then using that rod as a measuring guide, I marked out my rod for the other side. Man, I'm saying rod a lot right now. I don't even know anybody named Rod. I know a guy named Russ. Anyways, after cutting my rods to length, I took them over to the grinder just to get rid of all those sharp pokey parts that want to get you and I reinserted the threaded rod back through my apron and each leg, and I bolted it in place, or washered it in place, uh, nutted it. I nutted my rod in place. That doesn't sound right. I securely fastened my rod in place. Then I wanted to add a few brace pieces connecting each leg to one another. This would serve two purposes. It would make my legs a lot more sturdy, as well as keep my legs from sliding in towards one another. So after measuring out exactly where I wanted those brace pieces to land, I took out my threaded rod. There's gonna be a lot of pulling things in and pulling them out and putting things together and then taking them apart. Anyways, it's just part of the process, go with it. Once my legs were disconnected, I marked out exactly where I wanted my brace pieces to land, and I took each leg over to the drill press and I pre-drilled for the screws that would go through the leg and connect all of my brace pieces. Then I took my legs back over to the table and you guessed it, I reinstalled my threaded rod. You might be wondering, why didn't I just hook my brace pieces in and then put it in place? Well, because I wanted to get those washers that you can see there situated between the apron and my leg. And that would have been really hard to do if they were already connected with those brace pieces. So I installed my legs first into the table. And once they were installed, I clamped my brace pieces in between each leg. <laughs> hey, and I secured them with these. Now I couldn't find stainless steel screws that were long enough, so I switched to brass. Brass is also another metal that does well outside, and I'm hoping these won't leach. So after securely fastening all of my brace pieces between my leg with those long brass screws, I removed all of my clamps and I tested to see how the legs folded. And wouldn't you know it, they fold exactly how they're supposed to. Man, it's amazing what you can get done if you do things twice. Anyways, we don't need to talk about that right now. Let's just focus on the fact that I got a whole nother leg I have to do. So I did the exact same thing on the other side that you just saw me do with the other leg. And before long, I had both set of legs hooked together and folding exactly how I wanted. Now it was time to see if this whole table would even be sturdy enough to work. I mean, I had no doubt that it would stand up, but the real question was, would it be sturdy enough to eat at without seeming like you're constantly eating in the middle of an earthquake? So after folding out the legs, I plopped it upright, and there was only one thing left to do, and that was climb on top with my chubby self. I mean, if it holds me, then hey, I think it's actually gonna work. Nice. Now for the top. Because this is an exterior piece, I'm not gonna glue up a slab top. 
in my experience, glued together pieces of wood just don't do well long term outside. So my plan was to attach each piece individually to the top with exposed fasteners. For the top I'm using these stock 2x6 pieces of cedar decking. They already have a nice rounded profile on either side of them and I just decided to go with it. So I just started working my way across the tabletop, making sure to screw directly into the brace pieces on the apron below. I countersunk each hole and I used stainless steel fasteners. By countersinking the hole, I ensured that the head of each fastener would sit just below the table surface. I also used an eighth inch spacer block to leave a nice eighth inch reveal in between each board. I just marked, spaced, drilled, and screwed my way across the entire table surface. I regret saying that. That just sounded funny. Anyways, it didn't take long until I had all of my boards securely fastened to my table base. Now you'll notice that my ends are completely uneven and mismatched and not lined up. And that's okay. I purposely left all of the pieces long so that I could trim them down after the fact with the... what's that thing called? Man, I'm spacing right now. Track saw. Saw that rides on a track. A track saw. That's why it's named a track saw, because it rides along a track. Anyways, I pulled out the track saw, I measured, and I trimmed down each end so that it was perfectly flush and even to one another. And with that, our table was almost complete. There was just a few other little things we needed to add to make it just function a little better. So I tipped the table over on its side, I folded in the legs, and then I laid the entire thing down, upside down. The entire thing down, upside down. No, that doesn't rhyme. That just sounds stupid. Anyways, I had to figure out a way that I could lock the legs in place so they don't flop open when you're carrying it around or trying to store it. So this was my solution. I added a little washer and a screw. No, that's not the solution. I'm just getting the screw started. And a little wooden piece of scrap cedar. I drilled my screw directly through the center of that piece of cedar, as you can see here, and then I attached it to that bottom brace piece. That washer is just acting as a spacer to keep it up above the legs, just a, about a sixteenth of an inch. Then all you have to do is spin this thing to the side, and it locks your legs in place. So I added one to both sides, and I was good to go. My legs folded, they locked, and my table was done. Well, not done. There is one more thing I have to do, but it's terrible and I don't want to talk about it. It's grotesque. It's too horrible to even speak into words. It's literally the worst possible thing you could think of. And that's sanding. That's right. I did it, people. I had to sand the entire table down. But I'm not going to lie, I didn't sand it very well, because I'm not even putting finish on this thing. Cedar actually does great outside, so I just lightly sanded the whole thing, and I'm going to let it just gray out and age over time. So with it lightly sanded, the very last thing I wanted to do was add a few handles to the bottom of the table. The table's really not as heavy as you would think, but it is a little awkward to carry by yourself. So I just wanted to add a nice place to hold on to, so if you wanted to carry this table by yourself, you could. Now for the test. Let's see how the whole thing works. Unlock the legs, fold the legs out, walk around the table like a stud, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, and flip the table up on its feet. Then let's pretend, oh, now it's, it's winter time. It's starting to rain. Got to put the table away quick. Ooh, don't want it to get all wet. You fold the table down, fold the legs in, fold that leg in, lock the legs in place so they don't move, and then you grab onto those handles you conveniently installed, 
and carry the table away. But it's not winter, it's spring. So let's actually put the table where it goes, shall we? Ah oh, man, I gotta go make more cereal. <laughs>